Hello everyone, here we are going to see about scientific management presented by S. Janathan, Osbikam A, Cases Kasinara College of Arts and Science. First of all, we are going to see about introduction about F. W. Taylor. He is known as father of scientific management, born into a wealthy family in US in 1856, graduated from Stephen Institution of Technology as a mechanical engineer in 1883. Let's see the meaning of scientific management. Scientific management is a theory of management that analyzes and synthesizes workflow. Its main objective is improving economic efficiency, especially labor productivity. One of the earliest attempts to apply science to the engineering of the process and to the management. Scientific management is sometimes known as Taylorism. Next, we are going to see about principle of scientific management. First principle, science not rule of thumb. Replace working by rule of thumb or simple habits and common sense and introduce the scientific method to study work and determine the most efficient way to perform specific tasks. Next principle is harmony not discussed. Man is served as a link between the owners and the workers. There should be complete harmony between the management and workers. Both should realize both are important. It emphasizes that management should share benefits of the organization to workers and workers should work hard with loyalty. Next principle is cooperation not individualism. This principle is the extension of second principle. Competition must be replaced by cooperation both should realize that they need each other. According to him, there should be an equal division of work and responsibility between workers and the management. Next principle is development of each and every person. The principle of scientific management aims at development of every individual to the maximum possible extent. It implies for the prosperity of each individual workers as well as for the organization. The efficient level of workers should be increased by providing scientific training and developing their potentiality to the maximum. Next we are going to see about techniques of scientific management. Functional foremanship, Taylor advocated separation of planning and execution function. This concept was extended to the lowest level of shop floor. Under factory manager, there was a planning in charge and production in charge. Under planning in charge, there are instruction cutter, root clerk, time and cost clerk, disciplinaries. Under production in charge, there are speed boss, gang boss, repairs boss, inspector. Four men should have quality of intelligence, honesty, good health, etc. As this all quality cannot be seen in one person, they were given post depending upon their capabilities. Second technique is standardization and simplification of work. Taylor advocated the importance of standardization tools, instrument, working hours, working condition, and quality of work to maximum output and by making work simple by eliminating unnecessary diversity of products. Next technique is method study. The main objective of this study is to identify a best way of doing a job. The study is undertaken to minimize the cost of production and maximize the quality of satisfaction of the customers. Next technique is time study. It determines the standard time taken to perform a well-defined job. The objective of time study is to determine the number of workers to be employed and to determine the labor cost. Next technique is Factoring you study. The study seeks to determine the amount and frequency of waste interval required for a worker in completing your job. The objective of the study is to provide proper interval for a worker in between work so that efficiency and productivity can be increased. Next study is motion study. It refers to the study of movement like lifting, putting objects, which are undertaken while doing a typical job. Unnecessary movement are soft to be eliminated so that it takes less time to complete the job efficiently. Next one is differential payment. Taylor was a strong advocate of peace wage system. He wanted to be differentiated between efficient and inefficient workers. So he introduced wage payment for those who perform above standard and those who are perform below standard. Here we are going to see about criticism of scientific management. Task allocation. Task allocation is the concept that breaking tasks into smaller tasks into smaller and smaller tasks allow the determination of optimum solution to the task. Next criticism is problem of unity of command. Taylor used functional foremanship, so the worker have to report 8 bosses. This break the principle of unity of command, where the worker have to report only one boss. Lack of unity of command can create confusion in the organization. Next criticism is mechanical approach. Taylor's approach he gave too much importance to efficiency. He did not consider the human element. Taylor considered workers as robot, which could speed up the work at any cost. Next one is problem of separation of planning from doing. Taylor said to separate planning from doing, 
in reality we cannot separate planning from doing the planner should also be engaged in doing then only they will able to make realistic plan for the organization next one is individualistic approach Taylor scientific management gives too much importance to individual performance and not to group performance however the success of an organization depends not only on individual performance of worker but also on group performance of the worker thanks for watching this video helps to know about the concepts of scientific management thank you once again